Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today I'm in Nepal. I'm in the capital city of Kathmandu and this is my first time here in Nepal, a country that's extremely rich in its diversity of culture and cuisine. So the plan for today is to take you for a breakfast street food tour. I've woken up bright and early. Well actually it's going to be an all day long street food tour. So we're just going to eat until we are absolutely stuffed. But we're also going to be meeting up with a local Tharu man. So the Tharu are one of the many ethnicities living here in Nepal. He's going to cook us some traditional Tharu cuisine. It's going to be a great episode. I am so excited to be here. Let's go eat some Nepali street food. Just popped into this little Nepali sweet shop for a quick breakfast snack. This place closes early, so we wanted to stop here before they close. They're famous for their halwa and malpua. So halwa is this on top. It's like a sweet, and then malpua is a fried dough that's been fried in ghee. It's like a little cookie with uh, some almost like icing sugar on top. You just plopped it on top. Let's try it. Mm. Yeah. The halwa is still warm from being made fresh this morning. And the malpua has got a crunchy exterior, but then a really kind of gummy, bouncy inside. You can see the contrast in the crunchy layer there, and then kind of chewy on the inside and all that halwa on top. But the best part is how fresh and warm that halwa is. There's a quick little snack before we keep going. Mm. Uh, it's called malpua, and this is called seal. Sell roti, yeah? Sell roti, yeah. Oh, okay. They have all kinds of other different types of Nepali sweets here, and this shop's been around for 79 years. This is made fresh every single day. It's delicious. Mm. Yum. The streets here are just so full of life. It's only 7 a.m. and it is absolutely bustling here. We're heading deeper into the bazaar. Some chicken there. And uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of eating today. This is so exciting to be here in Nepal for the first time. So this area is called Asan Bazaar. It is a morning market, and it's the perfect place to have a breakfast street food tour. Like I said, a lot of life here, just bustling. Just served on a piece of newspaper here and this is the cell roti. It's nice and puffy on the outside and I'm not sure it's going to be sweet or savory so let's try it. Hmm. It's kind of neither. Maybe slightly sweet. It really doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. But the texture is nice and soft on the inside. It's similar to the mapua that we just tried. Actually, almost the exact same flavor, but without the halwa on top. But the stall is just so cool. Just a little push cart, frying up the fresh sal roti, and it's popular with the locals. Mm. Simple breakfast food. A little bit oily, not, not bad. Nepali donut. It almost looks like a, like a bagel or like a pretzel or something too. Mm. Not bad. We got the cell roti, but you gotta have it with tea. Oh my god, I'm gonna get killed here. <laughs> so we're taking the cell roti over to a little tea stall to have it with some tea. I think it's gonna go really well like that. This is the tea stall here. She's just set up right on the sidewalk here, right below this beautiful shrine. And here in Nepal, they call it chia. So like some countries call it chai, but here they call it chia. So it's just a tea, masala tea with a lot of milk in it. So it's gonna go perfect with that cell roti. Go 
Thank you. So she just made up a fresh batch, put lots of sugar in there as well. And there's just like a little bit of uh, masala, not a whole lot of spice. It's pretty much just a plain tea with sugar and milk. Let's try it, sitting on the streets here in Kathmandu. Oh, it's so creamy and sweet. And the temperature here this morning, maybe around 10 degrees, so it's a little bit chilly, so this is perfect. Oh man, but I know what's gonna be even better is dipping the cell roti in the chia. All right, go for a big dunk in that. This is just like a donut and coffee. It's like Tim Hortons here in Nepal. Oh, yeah. That works really well. I love the atmosphere. Sitting on the stools right below the shrine. Wow, what a first day. First start to the day here in Nepal. Mm, that's really good. So you can see she's completely packed up and gone and everybody else that's set up on the street is also packing up and the reason is because the police come here at 9 o'clock and they kick everybody out. So all the people that are set up on the street have to leave at 9 o'clock so we got in our tea right in time. for something called Gal Marie. This is the stall right here. She's set up right in her front door, frying it fresh. So it's similar to the cell roti. That was a fermented rice batter. This is a wheat batter. And she takes a handful of it and then just plops it into the hot oil. And you can see it's also like a donut. So if that was like a donut from Tim Hortons, this is like the Timbit from Tim Hortons because they're just little balls. So a little bit of sugar in there, a little bit of salt, but it's different than the cell roti because it's not a rice batter. Oh, smoking hot. Mm, this one's a lot more savory than the cell roti. I can taste the salt in it for sure. Another simple food, but also popular for breakfast here in Nepal. Very popular with the locals. They're lined up right outside her front door and uh, selling it really fast. She just finished off the last of it, I think. Yeah. Mm, it's really fluffy and airy. Delicious. So Nepalis are not huge on breakfast. It's pretty simple affair, just a glass of tea and maybe some uh, cell roti or the gawa mari. But uh, we're gonna try to find some other unique things that you can try early in the morning here in Kathmandu. Okay. Oh. Yeah, now. <laughs> so what what is this for? So this is just for the blessings. Blessing? Like, yeah, we put this to the God and we get it for ourselves. There are tons of temples, countless here in Kathmandu, and every time you just turn around a corner, it seems like there's a new one, and especially in the mornings, Nepalis like to stop at the temple and do a prayer on their morning walks when they're shopping in the mornings. You can see everybody here is uh, praying to the God at this temple. Okay, my turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm blessed now? Yeah, you're blessed. All right. So for men, we always put it here, and for women, it's here. Oh, so for men, it's like halfway down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to wipe this thing. Okay. It is a beautiful culture. It feels very pure and unaltered. It seems like uh, I've kind of went back in time, stepping here into the streets of Kathmandu. So we just lit a candle, made a little wish to the god, well one of the gods. In Hinduism, there's over 33 million gods, so you can imagine, it's a complicated religion. I'm just uh, doing my best to show you guys whatever I can. What did you wish for? <laughs> if I tell you, my wish won't come true, so <laughs> it's a secret. Party, party. There's 
so much to see, so much to smell and taste and do here in Kathmandu. It's, it's intense, but I'm loving it. It's so cool. This guy is sharpening a knife here with this really unique contraption. He's using his feet. It's like a bike that's been converted into a knife sharpener. And then right here, you've got a ton of meat for sale. Okay. They have to come up and down. So it's like a delivery service? Yeah, yeah. Delivery oh, service. okay. So, the bag down. so what? He's ordering something from this yes, shop? He's ordering something. They uh. will put it in the bag and pull it up. <laughs> okay, so, ordering some milk and oil. Whoa. He's really high up. That's like six stories or more. It's like time saving and you don't have to come up and down. Yes, yeah, time saving. Very smart. I like this idea. All right, good to go. <laughs> That's Nepali innovation at its finest. Just drop a bag down from your six-story apartment to the little convenience store down here and you don't even need to leave your room. That's small kitchen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And this is dried meat? Yeah. It's buff? Yeah. yeah. Buffalo? Buffalo. Buffalo, oh, okay. And where, where is the semolina? Semolina. Oh, it's in here? The, is it halwa? Halwa. It's halwa semolina, uh, okay. So we just popped into this um, little blue shop and they have a tiny little kitchen and they're serving halwa, semolina halwa with potatoes. So we just ordered up, we came upstairs. Let's try it out. This is a really interesting looking platter that we've ordered up here. There is some chickpeas that look like they've been stewed or curried, and then some potatoes, a half a boiled egg, and then this is the semolina halwa. So I'm gonna try some of these um, chickpeas with potatoes, and that's pretty much the staple here in Nepal is chickpeas and potatoes. Uh, many dishes containing those ingredients. Now that's got a lot of flavor compared to what we were eating this morning. That is just full of flavor. A little bit spicy, can taste the curry leaves in there. Similarly to halwa, which should be sweet, I expect. So this is different than the halwa we tried this morning. This one's made with semolina. Mm. Mm. It's not as sweet as I was expecting. And there's a little bit of cinnamon in there. Mm, that help was really, really good, actually. I'm gonna chase that with another chi, the chia. Oh, yum. I love that halwa. A little bit of boiled egg, a little bit of chickpeas, some potato. And you would never even expect that this shop was a restaurant. It just looked like, I don't know a home from the front. Really cool little shop and uh, full of flavor there, food there. Compared to what we ate this morning, that was just so full of flavor. It is like a labyrinth in this city. Look at that. It doesn't look like it would be uh, an alleyway that you should go through anyway, but then it just pops out and you, you're just in a new part of the city. There's so much to explore here. Like, look at this little hallway here. I've gotta watch my head, I'm way too tall. Oh my gosh. And it's not like I'm the only one using it. This is like a main thoroughfare.
This is one of many stupas here in Kathmandu. This one is actually a replica of a very famous one called uh, the Monkey Temple. There are hundreds if not thousands of pigeons here. They're flying all over the place. But as soon as you step in here, it's just like calm, peaceful. The reason there's so many pigeons is because <laughs> they like to feed them. You can buy a little bit of corn here and come feed them. Kind of sets a really cool atmosphere. But man, there is a ton of these guys. And you turn one corner and you're back out in the chaos. It is quite a contrast between uh, very peaceful and very not peaceful at all. and he's cooking up some fresh puri. So it's just a fried bread, tosses it in there and then it just balloons up in the hot oil. And I'm not sure what we're gonna eat it with, but this is like a really classic bread here in Nepal. Fresh puri, okay? <laughs> what is it? It's a microphone. So the curry is a chana curry. So chickpea, there's some onions in there, lots of chickpeas, I can smell it, it smells amazing. And then this is the freshly fried puri, so it's completely ballooned up. Whew, that's really hot still. But this is the perfect bread for eating this kind of curry. Go for a little dip. The puri, a little bit greasy, a little bit oily, but the curry, has a nice spice to it, nice onion flavor. And the best part about this bread is the way that it's ballooned up, you can create like a perfect little thing to scoop up the curry like that, and it holds on to it really well. Oh man, that is really good. The puri is great to eat with it, but you can also just have it like this with a spoon, and it's really good too. Mm. And if you're not familiar with Nepal, it's smack dab in the middle between India and China. There's a lot of Indian influence, I mean, a lot. And there is Nepali food that is strictly Nepali, but there's also influence from China, so it's a diverse mix of different cuisines. Oh yeah. Something you'll see at a lot of these shops is this right here on the table. It's a breath freshener, so it's a little bit of sugar, take a little bit of sugar like this, and then uh, fennel seeds. I don't know if I did it too much, but uh, is that too much? No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Whoa. It's super licorice crunchy, and it immediately wipes away all the oily curry flavor. Thank you. <laughs> From my throat to my nose. Yeah, completely fresh in your breath. It's strong. Mm. You like it? Um, oh my god. Not my type. I have to say, I'm not a big fan of it, but I can guarantee you that it's like you brush your teeth. Well, now we are heading to meet a man, a Tharu man. So he's of the Tharu ethnicity, one of the many ethnicities here in Nepal, and he's gonna cook us some Tharu cuisine. But first, we gotta go to the market and get the ingredients. You are Tharu? Yes, I'm Tharu. Okay. Is there a lot of Tharu people living in Kathmandu? Yeah, a lot of. A lot of? Yeah. A lot of. We're cooking gonki, which is snails. It's snails. Yeah, it's a famous Tharu dish, yeah? A famous traditional. You traditional? Alright. Gonki. Gonki, okay. Gonki, degree. Yeah. And this is them. Wow. 
Where do the snails come from? Are they from the like the field or? Uh, no, from the lakes and the, from the rivers. So. We got the snails, now we're going to head back to his home to cook them up, traditional Tharu style. It's just one of many, many ethnicities here in Nepal. They have something like 120 official languages, just to give you an idea of how many different types of people are living here. This is for the acha? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And some onions. And some onions, okay. And some green chilies. Okay. So we're also picking up some veggies because we're going to be preparing uh, another dish called acha, it's a pickles. So getting a couple different things here from this little stall. These are the gongi and uh, I'm here with Sudar, so I'm back at his house and we're gonna cook these up traditional Daru style, right? So this is Sudar-san's sister and uh, she, you're just starting to prepare dikri, right? Yes. And that's uh, another Daru dish. So is it only water and rice flour or you yes. add anything else? Only water and rice flour. Oh really, okay. Simple. There's five million people in Kathmandu, but about three million of them are from different regions of Nepal, including the Tharu. They come from an area called the Tarai. It's a lowland area near India, and luckily for us, we were able to meet up with some local Tharu living here in Kathmandu so they can prepare their traditional dishes of the lowlands of Nepal here in Kathmandu for us. When did your family move to Kathmandu, do you know? Well, they haven't moved. They are still in uh, their home only. Oh, they came here, yeah, they came here for oh, study. Oh, so your family's still living in the other part of Nepal. Oh, really? So you're just here to study. Mm -hmm. What are you preparing here, Namrata? Acha. Acha. Yeah, it's like vegetable salad. Oh, okay. So we had potatoes, uh, cucumber, yep. and then these greens. So would your family eat gongi yes. a lot? Yes. There is one uh, celebration, our, it's a new year, at mm. uh, Mark uh, Mag first, then we eat uh, gongi. Can you find gongi at a restaurant in Kathmandu? On the menu at restaurant? Very, very few. Very few? I just know one. So you are sisters? Yes. Yeah, sisters? I'm a sister. Uh, how old are you? I'm 22. So the dikri is really simple. It's just the rice flour and the water and now they're rolling it out into kind of like the shape of a sausage, a little bit thicker in the middle and that's like a staple food of the taro and Mink is helping out. I don't think I help at all. So make a circle first. Make a circle first. Yeah. Like that? Yes. And then... Do this like, like this. Make a cylinder. But it has to be like big in the middle. Thicker in the middle, Thicker, yeah. Thicker, yeah. So you, why do you break it? Uh, it would be easier to uh, take it. To eat it. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so it comes out of the shell easier. Yeah, and we'll remove the... It says the eye. Yeah, it you is... called the eye? Yeah. Ah, uh, so it's like a little piece of shell. I will remove it too. Okay, it's hard work. You break it one by one. So the driki are finished being molded and now they're gonna be steamed for a little bit and the gongi just finished boiling. So now he's gonna crack them open one by one. So 
the achar has all kinds of different veggies in there, boiled potatoes, onions, green chilies, uh, lemon juice, and then she just uh, fried some fenugreek seeds in oil with turmeric and then just dumps that on top. Is that mustard oil? Uh, yeah. It's mustard oil, okay. Oh, and now some chili powder. So green chilies and red chili powder. Oh yeah, it's gonna be spicy. So normally we mix it with the hand. I'm trying to do with this. Okay. Can I mix it with the hand? Go ahead, whatever you want. Okay. What are you doing? So this is the final product of the acha. And I'm gonna try a piece. I think this is radish here. Mm. Yeah. It's sour, spicy, nice crunch. Mm. There's a lot of flavor in there. I can taste the mustard oil. That's gonna be great with the snails. That's gonna add a lot of flavor. I think I'm gonna be eating more of this than the snails, if I'm being honest. Okay, the driki are finished. Dikri. Dikri. <laughs> and uh, it kind of looks like a noodle. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, Halfway between noodle and bread. So we've got a spice blend here into a paste. Garlic, uh, coriander, red chilies, and just sauteing some onions. That's gonna be the base for the snails, the gongi. base of onions and spice blend just smells so good that uh, it's changing my mind about the snails. I think they're actually gonna be really good after smelling that spiciness. It's just flour and water? Yes. Okay. All right, we've got a Tharu feast and uh, I'm gonna learn the traditional way of eating. You're gonna show me how? <laughs> okay. Yeah. You gotta do it with your spoon. Not with the spoon, with your fingers only? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other side. Oh, the other side. Okay. And then... Mm. Mm. I didn't get anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Try the other side. Spicy. Mm. I can't get it. <laughs> Okay, hold on, let me try another one. I, got, I can't get that one out, it's stuck in there. Mm -hmm. Almost. There we go. Mm -hmm. There's just like a tiny little bite of snail meat in there. But it is full of flavor. Tastes like curry, lots of spices going on in there. It only in the winter season. Mm -hmm. It keeps us uh, keep warm. Keep you warm in the winter season. Very healthy food, yeah. Mm, that one came really easy. Oh, they're really good. That's delicious. I made it easy for you. I, <laughs> I break the more yes. back part so it will come easy. Yeah, if you didn't break the little back part, there's no way you could even get them out. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Deep deep. Oh, That's just good. dip it in like yeah. this. Okay. Yeah, these are kind of like a little, like a big noodle, I mean. Carbs to help fill you up because there's not a whole lot to the snail, but there's a lot of flavor in that curry. Mm. Yeah, it soaks up the curry really well. And let's try the, the acha. We get some cucumbers, some radish. Yeah, is it good. <laughs> you really impressed me. I wasn't sure what I was gonna think about this, but honestly, really good. And you know what this is gonna go perfect with? The tissue oil that I didn't know. Is this. <laughs> perfect with a local Nepali beer. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Whoa, that's a strong beer. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect beer snack. Oh, well, it's not too bad. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm getting the hang of it now. You gotta really use some force to get them out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you hear that pop, that's when you know <laughs> you've got it. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, that was some awesome Daru cuisine. Thank you so much for the introduction. Yeah, very delicious. All right, we've come back to the center of town and we're gonna keep going. So the snails were not that filling, so we're gonna keep eating some street food. There's a couple more things we wanna try before it gets dark. this woman who's making pakora which is basically breaded and fried vegetables she's got potatoes chilies and bitter gourd and it's a chickpea batter with some turmeric some spices she's frying it in the oil fresh and hot and it's super popular with the locals so we're gonna order up a mix uh, platter and try some of the pakora out mixed platter here served on just a piece of newspaper on top of this oil drum. We've got all the different flavors but I'm really interested in trying the chili and this is a chutney back here. It looks like a spicy chutney so go for a little dip. Try that. Oh wow. Woo. That's gonna be spicy. That's a slow burn. Full of flavor though. Really crunchy on the outside, and it's got a really concentrated chili flavor. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's super spicy. I think it's the chili, but also the chutney with it is spicy too. Woo wee! That's hot. All right, let's just try one of these potatoes. I'll go for a crispy one. Mm. Oh, that one's really hot. But that chutney is awesome. It's got a tangy kick to it. There's a lot of flavor in that chickpea batter. This one's really interesting. It's a bitter gourd. And you gotta have this with the chutney. The chutney is really full of flavor, but damn. I shouldn't have had that green chili first. That's really spicy. Everyone's laughing at me. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's got a really unique flavor. It's not bitter, actually. Thai review of how spicy is the chili. It's a slow burn. Oh my gosh. Honestly, somehow the chutney like cools it down. <sighs> Give it a minute. Oh my God. It is good. It's good, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's more spicier than the... I like it. Oh, you're getting confident. Actually, it's not that spicy. What the hell? This chutney is full of flavor. The potato, like, it's like french fries or potato wedges, but on another level. Yeah, I think we should go for dessert. You really didn't think I was spicy? Yeah, they a little bit burning, but not like That is street food at its finest, right on the street. Uh, doesn't get more legit than that. And these little alleyways are everywhere. I would not know my way around if it weren't for our guide, Namrata, to show us around because it is like an absolute maze in here. But uh, now we're gonna go get something that can hopefully cool off some of this heat. Right, Mink? You need to cool off the heat? What heat? Through this secret little entrance here, Apparently there's a super popular sweet shop. Just look at this place, it's absolutely packed. And I know exactly what I'm going for. The Jerry. So 
So here in Nepal they call it jerry, but in India it's known as jalebi. It's basically a really rich sweet, and the way that he makes it is pretty interesting. He uses kind of a cloth that's filled with batter, and then he just squeezes it through the cloth and makes it into this kind of spiral shape, and then fries it up, and then once it's done they soak it in sugar and it becomes super, super sweet. It's really good. Thank you. So it's not just sugar syrup that they're soaked in at the end, it's like a mixture of saffron and sugar syrup. So it's got this beautiful red color. And then this is the final product, fresh out of the fryer. The famous Jerry here at this place called Tip Top Sweets. <laughs> wow, that's so good. Mm -hmm. That definitely cools down the spiciness from the pakora. It is so crunchy on the outside, and when you bite into it, it just explodes with that sugar syrup. It feels like it's stuffed full of liquid. It almost feels like it's uh, got a filling, but it doesn't. It's just soaked in it, but the way that it's fried kind of makes it feel like when you bite into it, it's stuffed and it pops in your mouth. Mm. It's so delicate. And it's not as sweet as the ones I've tried in India. It's a lighter sweetness, so. I feel like I could eat a lot more of these. One is certainly not enough. These are super addictive. I can't believe how busy it is. As soon as they finish frying them, they pretty much sell out. Everybody's waiting there with their receipt to get their uh, jerry. So, going in for round two here. Hot and fresh. So, so good. These ones are really light, so I feel like I could eat like a ton of them. I mean, I can eat a ton of them. Mm. Just a hint of saffron floral flavor. Mm. I love how they just burst in your mouth with sweetness. Yeah, it is so good. Delectable. <laughs> Nepal takes hidden gem to another level. Who would have thought that this crazy popular sweet shop was hiding in this tiny little alleyway? It literally looks like it leads to nothing, but you see the people flowing in and out. All right, we have room for one more thing. Let's try. Classy? Yeah. All right. This is old shop. Old shop. How old, how old is the shop? Do you know? Uh, this is uh, not 20 years old. 20 year old shop. Yeah. Uh, okay. You're right in the temple. Yeah. yeah. I've come to this little shop here for Lassie, and look, it's right inside of a temple. So that's super cool. It's been around for 20 years, he was telling me. And this is the Lassie here. So it's a yogurt drink. There's some raisins on top, koya, which is uh, the milk solids, and then some cashew nuts as well. I ordered up a small glass after a long day of eating, but let's try it. Yum. Oh, it's just really creamy, a little bit sweet, and then you get those chewy dried fruits on top of the raisins, but wow, it honestly tastes like vanilla. I don't know if they put some vanilla in there, but it tastes like vanilla yogurt, but a little bit thinner than yogurt I'm used to at least eating in Canada. So creamy. Oh, that's refreshing. That was day one here in chaotic Kathmandu. This place is full of good food. Nepali food has really surprised me. I loved everything that we tried today. Full of flavor, such a rich culture in a beautiful country. So much life here. There's just so much to see. Like I said earlier, an assault on all senses. If you guys haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post the next one. I've got a lot of videos coming from Nepal, so stay tuned. See ya.